Okay, so we're starting a new project today. Uh, I am playing a game here called Slither.io. Uh, it's one of the games that my kids like. I personally find it a little bit maddening. Um, but the, the, the idea here behind this little new project that I'm starting is that I want to start experimenting a bit with reinforcement learning. Uh, reinforcement learning is the technology that's used to power self-driving cars. Uh, it powers um, things like Google's AlphaGo. Uh, that's the, the AI that, that Google built to, to play Go to great success and fanfare. Uh, and basically the idea is that you program an agent that learns to play a game to maximize some value function and, and rewards and so on. So uh, I'm not by any means a reinforcement learning expert. In fact, I, before this project, have never really done anything with it at all. So um, what my goal here is, is to uh, build a little fun project that'll help me kind of learn some. So this is going to be, this is going to be a nice way to, to do that. Slither.io is a uh, pretty simple game. You're, you're this little worm and you swim around in this uh, sea of these little dots here. And the idea is to collect dots. And as you collect these dots, you get longer and longer. And uh, if you run into another worm or if you go off the edge of the map, then you die. And if another worm runs into you, then it dies. And when you die, uh, you leave behind lots and lots and lots of these little dots and other people can collect them and so on. So you want to avoid other worms, and at the same time, you want to pick up, uh, you know, all these little dots. So you can see this guy just died here, and there's an awful lot of, of uh, you know, jewels, little little shiny dots that got left behind, uh, and that's exciting. So I got to pick them up, and hooray, that's, that's really terrific. Um, there are a lot of sophisticated kind of uh, uh, strategies to this game. Um, lots of the big snakes will try and, and circle you. And if you get surrounded by a snake, then you're, you're pretty much doomed. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how the, the agent that we, that we code up ends up using, uh, these kinds of strategies, or maybe even inventing new strategies to, to get good at this game. So, um, like I said, I don't know much about reinforcement learning, but, uh, I wanted to start out by just writing some code that would allow you to play the game randomly, right? So uh, just a completely naive agent, um, and then go from there. So this is kind of a challenge out to the data science community. Can you, uh, can you build a reinforcement learning algorithm that will teach itself to play slither.io? Now, most of what you see on, uh, on YouTube are YouTubers who are who build emulators, right? So the first step in this process for, for other folks might be to write up uh, an emulator that would actually uh, allow you to play the game, but you'd have API hooks into it, right? You'd be able to get the score and you'd be able to tell where the dots are and, and stuff like that. And that could actually make it easier uh, to, uh, to play the game. So uh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to actually make it uh, where we're actually programming the computer to... Uh, to actually play the web browser based game. And so I started out here by uh, just writing a, uh, a little bit of code that will basically play a random game of uh, slither.io. And that's where we're starting. This code is available out on GitHub. Uh, you can see the, the link here. So if you want to go in and give it a go yourself, I'd love to see kind of what you guys can come up with. Uh, feel free to, to clone this guy and actually start working. I did everything in a uh, Jupyter Notebook. So uh, what do we got? So this code here is just basically to uh, make the agent that we're going to code basically play a random game of slither.io. Um, so here, this is just Python. I'm just importing a bunch of the stuff that I'm going to use later. Let me walk through all the different functions that I've written. Uh, the first one is just to open a browser window. So this function will open a browser window, set the size and the position where you want it, uh, and then it's going to visit the slither.io website. This nest function is to control the mouse. I just copy pasted this from Stack Overflow somewhere. Um, we don't use all these functions, but they're here in case you do need them. Uh, like I say, this is just copy paste. Mostly we're using the move function inside of this mouse class. Uh, click, we use that some. Position was really useful for figuring out exactly where stuff on the screen was placed so we could read it in. 
this next function is just to take a screenshot of the screen. Like I said, everything here is going to be driven by what's actually showing on the screen. So this allows you to specify a rectangle uh, to take a screen grab of. And then uh, you can reduce the resolution just by skipping pixels. So this defaults to just take every pixel. But if you set this to, say, 5, it would skip every, all but the fifth pixels, right? So pixels 5, 10, 15, and so on. And that allows you to, uh, to reduce the resolution of the image that you take a screen capture of. Uh, I realize there are cleaner ways to do that, but uh, this is just super simple, super easy way uh, to get where we're trying to go. You can also convert it to grayscale, uh, and that'll reduce the dimensionality even more. Uh, this next function is to get your score. So like I said, we don't have hooks into the slither.io API. Uh, maybe they exist. I don't know. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't look. Uh, I just wanted to be able to look at the screen and grab the information. So this is actually using an OCR library to take a screenshot of the right position of the screen where the score is printed and then convert it into a numeric value and return it to the user, right? And so it's just going to do a continuous loop here. Uh, this is far from perfect. The OCR is not 100% accurate. And so you're going to get some noise in your target data here, your rewards data as you're thinking about what your score is and how it changed. Uh, but that's, you know, that is what it is. So uh, this continuous loop here is just going to keep running until it gets a screenshot that it can actually read. And it'll usually get a good one on the first go. Uh, sometimes the number gets read in wrong if there happens to be a, a dot or something in that little zone. Um, but it is what it is. This next function basically allows you to move your mouse. So you'll recall that in slither.io, once you start a game, where your mouse is, is going to determine which uh, direction your little worm is going in. So I just set a radius of 50 uh, pixels, and then uh, you can set a radiance, right? So there's two pi radians in a circle. And so by passing uh, the number of radians to this function, it will actually just move your mouse to a point on that circle that is that angle from the, the center of the screen, which is where your worm is. So this is how you control the movement of the worm. This function here will determine if the worm is dead. The way you tell is that when you go to uh, slither.io here, the word skin appears right down here in the same place as where your score would be, right? So if you read in your score and what returns is the word skin, then you know you're dead and you need to start a new game. If you are dead, you probably want to start a new game. So this is a function for doing that. Uh, we're sleep, we'll sleep for a second and then you got to click, right? So you want to move to the start position of the start button and click, but the window may not be active. So I'm going to go ahead and put uh, an extra click in there so that, you know, you can, you can make the window active and then start the game. And then this function just gets the direction that your worm is currently moved in, moving in based on your mouse position, right? So you use this when you start capturing data. Okay, and that's everything that you need uh, to control this worm and to read your score out of the game. Um, so how do we do that? So there's this function called generate data. Uh, when I originally started thinking about this, I, I really just wanted to gather some data about what happens from, uh, from random play. And so that's what this function does. It essentially plays the game, moves you randomly, and then records every second what the screen looks like and what your score uh, is one second from then. So we start out by initializing your score to 10, which is the score that you always start off with. Uh, and then we're going to record some data. You have control over where that, whether or not you're appending to that data set or whether you're, re, you're uh, overwriting it. Then we start a big loop here, set at 50,000, just an arbitrary number. And if you're dead, right, so it checks to see if you're dead. If you are dead, then it starts the, the, the game over again. And if you're not dead, then it randomly changes your direction to a new vector and captures a screenshot. Then it's gonna convert that uh, screenshot into a NumPy vector. Uh, so that we can record the data. Uh, we're going to keep the previous score, and then we're going to wait uh, for one second. It defaults to one second, but you can set it to whatever you want it to be. And we're going to get the score again. So we're reading that right off the screen using OCR. And then we're going to put together a row of data 
It's going to capture the data from the screenshot, plus the direction that we moved in, plus what our old score was, followed by our score one second later, and then the difference between the two. Now we're going to write that out to a file. And if you want, we're going to go ahead and print it to the screen. All right, so those are all the functions. And then here are some settings, right? So um, this, the top left part of the uh, game area is at 100 pixels. That's just because Chrome has a toolbar space up here before the actual window starts of about 100 pixels uh, or so. <clears throat> uh, then we're gonna set the resolution of the window that we open. Uh, here is the size of the game window. So this is the actual playable area. So this should probably say uh, width here and height here. So there we go. So this is the, the actual height of the game window, the playable area of the screen. Uh, we're gonna grab the center coordinates. That's where your, your worm is. And then if you wanted to capture just a smaller area of the screen, say a 200 by 200 square set of pixels, you could reduce uh, the size here. So that's what this section of code does. If you don't wanna do that, then just comment these guys out and it'll capture the entire game area of your screen. Um, your score, these are the, the location of the rectangle where your score is displayed. And then uh, this is the location of the start button once you're dead. Uh, this is going to instantiate the mouse so that you can control your mouse. Uh, and then this will actually open your browser window and generate data will actually start that loop so that you can, you can start recording data. So I've zoomed my screen out a bit here so that we can see a little more what's going on. Uh, I'm just gonna run my code here and we can see what happens. So you can see it opens the window automatically in the top left corner of the screen, moves it and resizes it to what it needs to be. And then it notices that we don't have a game going. And so it starts the game up. And you can see here that I am now swimming around happily and my score is uh, you know, being recorded by the, the system. And I'm going to keep on swimming around randomly, just doing my own thing here until I die, which I've just done. And then you can see over here that it's going to detect that I'm dead and it is going to start up a new game. And so this will go on playing uh, itself forever and ever and all the data points, the, the screen values, along with the direction we're traveling and the change in the score is going to be captured uh, regularly and stored out in a text file in the folder that the Jupyter Notebook is running in. And so you can see how that's working. So I'd love to see how everybody kind of takes this challenge on and, and if anybody has ideas about how uh, we might approach this differently or other ways we might do it, uh, then that would certainly be interesting to me. Uh, I'm in the process of doing some reading and research in terms of a, a fairly simple way to, to solve this problem. And once I learn more about how that works, then I will take a swing at uh, actually writing the code to, to make this thing do what I want it to. Uh, and then I'll get more sophisticated, right? So we'll, we'll go from a very simple, maybe like a dynamic programming approach or, or something like that, uh, over to something more complex, like maybe a convolu convolutional uh, neural network or, or something like that. So anyway, uh, I'd love to hear what folks think about it. So leave me a comment in the, uh, in the comments if you uh, have any ideas on where this, this project can go. And if you do decide to take a crack at it, I'd love to see what you do and how you approach the problem and how you change the code. So feel free to run out to GitHub and grab my code and use it as a shell or write your own. I'd love to see what you do.